Hello, my name is Jacob Monk and uh, this video is about a subject that is very relevant for all of us. For you, for me, for everyone you know, for every man and woman in the whole world. Because this is about the central relationship in your life. And this is the relationship to your mother. You know Virgin Mary, she is called the Mother of God. You know Virgin Mary, she is a spiritual figure that many of us are praying to. So she is our spiritual mother. She can give us inspiration to how to relate to women in general and our biological mother in this world especially. And this is the subject I'm going to talk about. It has nothing to do with with religion. You don't have to believe in God or in anything. This is pure psychology, but it is spiritual psychology. Because, you know, there is a materialistic kind of psychology saying that human beings are only machines. Machines made of meat. We are run by physical laws and our body is just composed of atoms. I'm not a follower of this kind of uh, view of human beings. I believe that you and me, we are souls. We have a body, but we are souls. And because we are souls, we are free. We have a free will. Because if you only run by atoms, then you run by the biological laws of physics. And that means that you have no free will at all. And if you have no free will, that means nothing is good and bad. And then your relationship to your mother is of no interest at all because a very big part of this relationship, it is up in your own head. It is not a relationship to your actually existing physical mother. It's a relationship to the picture you have of your mother. There can be two reasons why it is that way. One reason is you're not together with your mother. She is living in a uh, place in this world. She has her own family. Of course, you are part of her family, but maybe she has your father, her husband. She has other children. She has interest. Maybe she has a job. She has something to do. I hope your mother is happy. Of course. You're not together in a physiological way all the time with your mother. Of course not. That's one of the reasons your mother is like a ghost. She's in your mind. If you have a bad relationship to your mother, she's haunting you. She's making your life a hell. If you have a good relationship, she'll make you a strong person, a healthy person and a happy person. So it's very important what kind of relationship you have to your mother. You also have to remember that even when your mother is not in this world anymore, when she is dead, she has a very big influence on you. And I would like to show you a picture here. It is uh, about time. You can see time, it's going on. It's shown here on the line we have going from left to right. But time is one thing. Another thing is spirituality. Spirituality is going from you and up to the spirits, up to God, up to the picture you have of your mother, up to the non-physical Beings that exist in your mind, in your intelligence, in your uh, head. 
And these non-physical beings, they have a huge influence on your life. So that's why it has a great meaning when you do like this. It's not only a sign that religious people can use. No, it's, of course, it's the cross of Jesus, the cross where Jesus was crucified. But it's only for the religious people, for you and me and other people. It is first of all a sign saying that I want to be in contact with the spirits. This is one very important line in your life. And it's not a necessary, uh, it's, uh, it's not always so that you have a fine connection to the spirits. Not at all. Some people, they have no connection to the spirits. Maybe because they don't believe that the spirits exist, so they don't want to talk to them. Okay? That only makes you more poor. So it's not a good idea. But even people who want to be in contact with God, with the spirit, and maybe if your mother is dead, she is in the spiritual world. So this contact going this way, uh, from up and down and down up, you know, it's a two-way contact. Not only from up to down, it's also down to up. It's a dialogue. You can have a dialogue with every spiritual being in the world, including your mother, if she's not here in this world. So when you do this sign here, <coughs> You are saying that my life has two central aspects. One from the spirits down to me, and the other, it's the horizontal uh, aspect. It's your relationship to your friends, to your children, to your wife, to other people in this world. And for you to be happy, you need to have a good relationship to other people. You need to have a good relationship to your mother, if she's among the other people, she's uh, included in the horizontal line. If your mother is dead, that means she's including in the vertical line. So everyone in this world and in the world that follows this world, that means the spiritual world, they are included when you do like this. This is the basic sign of spirituality. It is very important because if there is a broken relationship to one of your friends, to your child, to your children, your husband, to your colleagues at your uh, in your job, or broken relationship to the spiritual world, to your mother, or even to other people who are dead, not existing in this physiological world. It's a great problem for you. But now let's concentrate on your mother. Well, this relationship has basically two faces. One face, it's here to the left, it's the face where your mother is living. And I want to talk a little about that, because many people, they have problems with their mother. I know it. My own mother is not living anymore. So I have a lot of experience with relationship to my mother. And I believe it's the same for every human being. And especially if you're a boy, if you're a man, the relationship to your mother is very, very deep. Actually, she was the first woman who ever loved you. And no woman in the world will ever love you so deep, so profound, and so real as your mother did and will do. So this is very important. Probably there will be a lot of times where you are irritated against your mother. Oh, she is annoying me this way or no. I'm quite sure about that. I believe every human being, especially Every man, every boy has this feeling about his own mother. Oh, it's too much. She's doing all the bad things. 
She is too old. She should not interfere in my life. Well, now she is interfering too much. Everything is wrong. But remember, your mother loves you and she also needs you. And you have a great responsibility for her well-being. So if you do something wrong, and I'm quite sure you do something wrong against your mother, because I did a lot of things wrong against my mother when she was living. If you do faults against your mother, if you sin, you hurt your mother one way or the other. If you don't try to help your mother, you don't try to be together with your mother, because if you stay away from your mother, well, that's a sin also, because your mother needs you. She wants to have a relationship to you. You are a very, very important person in her whole life. And if the relationship between her and you is not good, she'll feel bad. So you have a responsibility for healing this relationship. And how do you do that? Well, she makes faults and you make faults. But the only thing you can do is to concentrate about what you've done wrong yourself. So you need to find out what have I done done wrong. You have to give her an excuse. You have to try to be a better son. Of course you can criticize your mother. You're welcome to do that. You'll always criticize a person you love. You know that. If you have a nice wife, if you have some nice children, you know they'll criticize you, of course, because they love you. You have the right to criticize your mother as well. No problem. But there will be a a certain uh, border. There will be a limit. You can't go on just criticizing. You have to find a solution to the problems and then you have to forgive. And this is the most difficult thing in your relationship to your mother. First of all, you have to confess what you did wrong yourself. And then you have to forgive the things that she did wrong against you. And I'm sure she did a lot of things wrong. When you were a little baby, she did one thing and other and third thing. She tried to do her best, but she didn't have the the mind, the resources, the money. She didn't have everything she wanted. She had to adapt to the milieu that she was living in. So she couldn't be a perfect mother. But no mother is a perfect mother. Every mother tries to be the perfect mother, but they are not. The same with your mother. So you have to forgive her for what she did wrong. Don't think about it anymore. And don't ever try to hurt your mother in any way, physical, psychological, or any other way. Let me repeat. Don't you ever try to hurt your mother in any way. This is so important because if you look here, on the scheme I've showed you here, there are two phases in your relationship to your mother. One is the face where she's living and the other is the face where she's not living. And if you see here on the relationship, it changed, it changes over time. When you have a relationship to your living mother, you can use time with her can talk with her, have fun with her, go and enjoy beauty, we'll go on the beach to art museums and um, take your children to visit her. You have to accept her, you have to forgive her for all the things she hasn't done the perfect way. After she's dead, it's something totally different because now you can only talk to her in meditation and in prayer. I really hope for you, you know how to pray because you're 
you have the possibility to pray to your non-living mother, your dead mother, because what is dead is only her body. Like when you die, your body dies, but your soul continues. It goes to another world, to heaven. I hope it will go to heaven. And uh, I'm sure your mother will go to heaven. And you can pray to her. You can meditate, fantasize about her. You can have a spiritual contact to her. Put her pictures on your wall. Remember all the good times you had with your mother. And now it's a spiritual contact, as you can see on the figure here. You need to show respect for her. It's very, very important. You can pray. And now comes something very important. You must pay your debt. Well, what is debt? You have to understand that the biggest gift you have had in your whole life is the gift your mother gave you. She gave you your life. No one else will ever give you a gift that can be compared to the gift your mother gave you. That means forever you will be in debt to your mother. Not an economic debt, but a kind of moral debt, a personal debt, because she has given you the biggest present you can give another person to make this person alive to be the mother of this person or even the father of this person. That means to give the biggest gift that is possible. And what can you do? Because you want to have a balance in your relationship to your mother, just as you want to have a balance in your relationship to any other human beings in this world. If you have a balance, you have a good relationship. You don't have a good relationship if you do not have a balance. <clears throat> but the older your mother gets, the more you have to help her. She started up helping you all the time because you were a small kid. She had to learn you everything. And when she is old, she is maybe disabled. She is not able to do a lot of things. You have to be like a mother for her. You have to help her. You have to do all the things to keep her alive and keep her happy. So we have a big responsibility. And if she, when she is not here anymore, you can't continue that. You can only have a relationship in a spiritual way. But this debt you have to your mother will not disappear. It's a debt you have forever. And what can you do? You can only do one thing. When she's alive, of course, you can do all what you are able to and have the time to, to help her and to make her happy, to give her a comfortable life in her um, old age and the, in the last years she have. But then this debt, it is converted. It is converted to a debt you have to all human beings because all human beings are either mothers or fathers. You are mother or father yourself. Well, I suppose you are a man so you can be a father. If you are not a father yet, I hope you will be a father because it's a very challenging, it's a very inspiring, it's a very, very hard job to be a father and also to be a mother. Probably it's even more difficult to be a mother. That's why women, they are more intelligent than men. They have a social intelligence that most men do not have. Men have some kind of technical intelligence, <coughs> functional intelligence. But women, they have a special intelligence used for creating relationship with other human beings, first of all with their children. And your mother had this intelligence. And that's why she created you and made 
you the human being that you are today. So this big debt you have, you can only pay it back to the world, to the spiritual world, and to the physical world. And that means you have to find out what can I do? How can I contribute to a better world? How can I contribute to make some people more happy? Maybe many people. You have your own children. Well, that's where you can pay something back to your own children. Of course, you can do the best to make them happy. But you also have a debt that goes beyond your own children, to the world, to your working place, to your social relations. And you have to think about Where are my talents? What have I the possibility to change? And how can I put a footprint in the line of events that constitute the life of human beings? Well, this was all what I wanted to tell you. Your mother is the central person in your life. Respect your mother, love your mother, and when she's dead, pray to your mother. Thank you.